Hey guys, welcome to another video on the Beyond the Tape YouTube channel. Um, this is just a quick little video, might not be that quick actually, but we're just gonna go through uh, bike fitting and bike sizing because I've had a few questions come through about canyons on YouTube videos, etc. Basically bike fitting comes down to a few different principles, but the main two that I like to think of are your rider triangle and your balance between the contact points of your tires. Essentially, there are two tires at each end of your bike. Your rider triangle sits in between those and allows you to get your weight back or your weight forward. Simple. Um, what you're looking for on a bike fit and a mountain bike kind of style of bike you want to get depends on your riding style, your riding triangle, weight balance, flexibility, and body geometry. Body geometry basically determines how your body reacts on a bike. So for example, look at Jack Moyer and myself. He is 6'2", 6'3"-ish maybe, I'm 6'2". He has a lot shorter torso, longer legs, longer arms. I'm the complete opposite. He's very active on a bike, I'm very passive on a bike. He rides a large, I ride an extra large. We're both the same height. So that simple sum of height versus bike size is a little bit old school i'm a longer reach i like a longer reach and a longer bike because of my torso length and my shorter arms and shorter legs whereas he can handle that smaller bike because he's got a shorter torso longer arms longer legs our riding triangles are completely different our riding styles are completely different so how do you kind of determine what's what and how to get the right bike well Number one tip, film yourself. You've got an iPhone, you've got the video function and you've got a tree on the side of the trail. Have a look at where you're riding at the moment. Have a look whether you're being quite aggressive or quite passive on the bike and get an idea of your own riding style. What is in your head when you're riding and what is actually happening when you're riding can be completely different. So getting a video of yourself and getting an idea of your riding style or even asking your mates is number one. Know yourself, know what's happening. Let's have a look at the bike geometry. So you've got seat tube angle, reach, top tube, and chain stay length. Um, head angles don't really come into it. That's more of a riding characteristic of the bike, not the bike fit itself. But in what I like to talk about, the seesaw method, these are the main figures I like to look at. So as I said, there's that riding triangle is sitting like this between your two contact points down here. What you're doing when you're riding is you're moving the center of this triangle around on those contact points to make sure that you've got the right, correct amount of traction at all points. Whether you, And it also comes down to whether you wanna pick up the front wheel, where you wanna put that rear wheel, etc. Moving your riding triangle around and that body center mass is determining how your bike reacts to what you're doing. First, we'll look at reach because it seems to be the number everyone brags about and everyone wants to know. For myself, I like a 495-ish reach on most of my bikes. The reach is the center of the bottom bracket to your head tube. So draw a straight line up from the center bracket, measure at the height of the head tube from the distance between the two. This determines your body center of weight in relation to the handlebars when in an attack position. So when you're off the saddle, moving the bike around, getting around those corners, picking up the front wheel, weighting your front wheel, weighting the rear wheel, it's all determined by that reach number. The longer the reach number, the more that you're gonna to have to move your center weight forward or rearward to keep that front wheel down. Um, the biggest issue I have with long reaches is people think it's in relation to stability, I mean, it does increase your wheelbase. It does have some small relation, but it's not the be all and end all. A longer reach isn't gonna solve your problems. If you're losing front end traction and you're finding it hard to weight that front wheel, or you feel like you've got to maneuver a lot more around a bike to do the riding that you wanna do, perhaps your bike, you might actually be a little bit too big and that reach might be too far for your riding style. On the flip side though, if you're a guy like, Win Masters, who is 
seagulling on that front handlebar and weighting it down so much, a longer reach is going to help because your center of mass is forward a lot more when you're general riding style and you're not going to feel like you're going over the handlebars as much because that reach is giving you the room to micro adjust a lot better. Sure, head angle comes into play, but that's more to do with the handling characteristic than it is to do with bike fitting. Seat tube angle is the talk of the town for the last 12, 18 months, probably a little bit longer. Basically, bikes have got slacker, bikes have got bigger, and bikes have got taller. So if you have your rear wheel here and your seat tube is all the way back there and your front wheel's out here, if you look at that seesaw method, you're sitting right back. So for example, myself, if I'm on an extra large bike, I've got a lot of body mass. I'm trying to lose some, but I've still got a lot of body mass. If my seat's all the way back here, it'll pop up that front wheel. As bikes have got steeper seat angles, the seat has needed to get out of the way a lot more, so that's why I get longer dropper posts. So climbing seat angle is a very relative to your climbing position, so it makes climbing uphills a lot easier. Um, the one thing it does do though, is shorten your top tube. So your seater position could be quite cramped even though your reach is quite long. I actually prefer a slacker seat tube angle. Yet the gods haven't struck lightning down on me or blown my house up yet. So I guess I'm not saying something too controversial, but because I've got a longer torso, I run quite a low seat height. If I have a steep seat angle, I feel like I'm trying to ride a kid's bike up a hill it gets all cramped and all weird so whether you want that kind of more roomy climbing position or whether you want that tighter over the front relaxed climbing position where you're sitting more upright depends on that seat tube angle and that top tube length it seems to be forgotten but that top tube length can be quite important to your climbing position and the characteristics you want to get Obviously, if you reach as long as you want a steeper seat tube angle for the climbs because it's going to bring your center of mass over that front wheel for climbing and stop that flopping about, etc. Um, but it is something to look into. Steep seat tube, not always the best. But if you want a nice relaxed climb up to the hill, winch yourself up, bomb on the way down. It's good to look at. Seat tube height and is completely re relative to your leg length. So... There's a few different conversions and stuff you can do out there, but for myself, I like a lower seat tube again, because even though I'm 6'2", and I look like I've got long legs, I've actually got a longer torso, and my body geometry is a little bit off. So shortest seat tube means I can slam that seat out of the way. It also gives me a better pedaling position for when I'm on the bike, so a nice flat pedaling position, instead of being all the way up penny farthing or all the way down like Emily Batty. Now, this is where things start to get a little bit controversial as well. Um, chainstay length seems to be a hot topic as well, and coming into the next year or so, it's going to get even hotter, it's my belief. Brands like Norco, um, I think Specialized have done it a couple of times. There's a few brands now that are messing around with chainstay lengths in re relatively to bike sizing. Remember how I said the rider triangle? you got a long reach, you can keep it centered. But if your seat stay gets shorter, your weight starts to go back. What I've noticed with the shorter seat stay is it's way more playful, makes the bike real poppy and fun. But on the seat, steep stuff, as it starts to get steep and you lean back, all your weight goes towards that rear wheel. Sure, longer reach and head angles and stuff will play around with it, but keeping traction over the front while maintaining an aggressive riding position can be hum harder because your rear wheel is right under your ass. I once rode a Giant Trance E with a 475 mil chainstay and I wrote it off before I'd even ridden the thing. Anyway, test rode this bike and absolutely frothed on the longer chainstay. Why? There was more stability. I was centered, so I didn't have to worry about getting over the front bar of the bars more or bringing my weight back or doing too much because I was so centered. It gave me a better sense of stability on the downs. It helped eat up the rocks because you're trailing the rear wheel through instead of pushing it. It was a whole other ball game. Um, allowing my weight to be centered was key. Um, sure, 
it can have some adverse effects though. So it feels like you're dragging the rear wheel around a corner. It feels a lot more of a barge pole because the wheelbase is obviously longer, etc. But it does allow you to keep a more centered weight. If you look at what riders riding style you're doing and how your kind of body triangle is set up, this is going to help you with your bike sizing. If you find that you're on the bars a little bit more, you're riding a bit more forward, then that longer reach could actually help you because it's going to keep your body weight centered towards the front. If you find you're leaning back all the time, you're struggling for front end traction, it might not be a suspension tune and watching a hundred bike videos about how to set up your suspension could be a complete farce. You could look at changing your head stem length and getting your weight over the front wheel a little bit more. Controversial. A longer chain stay might actually bring your weight forward and put more traction on that front wheel. It's all about finding that balance and understanding your riding style. Um, just because Jack Moyer is riding a large doesn't mean I should because I'm six foot two and he's six foot two. Just because I'm six foot two and ride an extra large doesn't mean that you should either. Finding that balance between the two points is key. Um, keeping traction on those two wheels is key and setting up your bike right. So a couple of things you can do to help without buying a whole new bike, playing around with stem length. So I always run a 50 mil bike on my ste- on my bikes unless it's got a steeper head angle. Why is this? Because I like the way to find that ideal position of my bars in relation to my front axle. Um, if I go 50 mils, it goes over, becomes closer, closer to closer to the front axle and my weight balances all off. If I run a shorter handlebar or a shorter head stem, then my weight balance is going to come back off that front wheel. So it's either going to, if you feel like you're pitching over the front, shorter stem. If you feel like you might need a little bit more front wheel traction, try a longer stem, play around with it. Seat tube angle. So if you've got a slacker seat tube angle, try bringing your seat forward a little bit. And sitting on that, that's what I kind of like to play around with. If you've got a steep seat tube angle but want a bit more room in your bike, try sliding your seat back. Just little things. Try finding maybe an offset dropper. Super hard, but you might find something somewhere. You can't really play around with chainstay lengths and reaches and stuff, but if your mate's got a different bike with completely different geometry, go for a ride on it. See what it kind of feels like better for your riding. Um, I know this has probably not helped you too much, but it, if you can film yourself, get an understanding of your riding style, get an understanding of your body geometry and get an understanding of your rider triangle and your weight distribution, this is going to be a bigger asset than setting up your suspension and setting up your tire pressures and whatnot. That can come after. Getting that bike fit correct is 100% key. Um, longer lower slacker not always the best I'm a lazy rider I'm a passive rider with very little bit little flexibility so a smaller bike can help me with my weight distribution because I don't need to move as much a longer bike when I have to basically put my chest on the front bars to get any front wheel traction it fatigues me so much that I don't like riding that bike after a while and as I said if you can play around with some longer chain stays and see how that kind of feels for you, then give it a go, um, especially for taller riders. Longer reach, short chain stays, not a fan. Anyway, I hope this gave you some kind of idea. Please reach out into the comments. I hope I haven't just filled 10, 15 minutes of dead air for you. Um, yeah, have a, li- have a listen. Let me know in the comments, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. But yeah, thank you.